Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. students' lives. Uh, so, um, Brooke and Michelle, what uh, got you interested in uh, social media? Um, I think, just like you said, it's part of everyone's lives and being here on campus and stuff. Um, lots of faculty and, are, and sports teams all use, um, and different clubs all use social media to interact with the students and keep mm-hmm. in touch and, and, you know, send out alerts and updates on games and stuff like that. And um, I think we just wanted to look at both spectrums, positive and negative, that, mm-hmm. that causes the students while they're here on campus yeah. and sometimes off. Yeah, I'm trying to think what the first social media network was. If it was MySpace uh, or... I didn't have any of that before. Yeah, nothing? I had MySpace in like fifth grade, but I right. like never went on it. Just like now I go on Facebook to like look at news updates and right. that's about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was trying to, like, growing up, I don't, I mean, I barely had a computer. Like, I didn't have a computer at my house, yeah. uh, but I, I, no one had computers, and so there was, like, no ability to have some sort of easy access to. Right, I think MySpace, we, like, I made an account once on my mom's computer, mm-hmm. and then the only time I ever went on it again was, like, in computer lab in, right. like, fifth grade, yeah. if we had free time or something like that, so. Yeah, I didn't have one either. The first social media I joined was Facebook for the year that it started. Yeah. Uh, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, but looking at uh, social media and stress, what, what are some of the interesting research findings you're, you're starting to, to come across? It's just like, it's just like repeated over and over, like our uh, want for, to fit in. And like, it makes me think about like when it says that we only see everyone else's highlight reels, mm-hmm. like that's, that made me think about like, that's so true. I compare my life to people going on vacations, getting like a big job or um, like a good uh, grade in a class and I don't like see them like I'm eating ramen today like, yeah. <laughs> it's, they don't post that but that's all I compare my life to right yeah I think uh, most of the research is is usually highlighting the negatives and there's a few that talk about the positives but it's mostly mm-hmm. like um, being able to stay connected with your family and how businesses use social media to yeah. um, raise their level but um, yeah, most of the negative stuff, it just talks about how it depresses you mm-hmm. because you're looking at everybody's lives that are this much better than yours or, mm-hmm. um, you know, they go and do these awesome things and you're sitting in your room and stuff like that. And it mostly focuses on young kids that are in college or in high school and yeah. they talk about, like, the uh, the instances where, you know, bullying and stuff like that mm-hmm. where it just pushes those people that maybe don't fit in Um, in school that much further down the spectrum and it just destroys them and that's pretty much what all the research focused on and and how um, how the internet and these social media websites just tear people apart yeah yeah and I really like to yik yak just to like kind of lurk on it uh, and like look at things uh, back when it was completely new and anonymous and everything like that but uh, I never saw the bullying but there is definitely like mean things people say to each other on there and now I deleted it because there's no one on there right yeah my my high school uh, there was this huge fiasco like Yik Yak when it came out it was just like bullying that came Uh out and like my school didn't do much about it just because yeah it was just didn't but like it yeah it just got really bad like I never downloaded it but like you were like if people heard that you had it on your phone it Uh was kind of like a you're an idiot kind of thing like it's okay. so dumb so that was kind of good when I when we all had that reaction so. yeah but it's definitely yeah my school had it too and it was mostly the football team you know like mm-hmm. the stereotypical jocks but sure. they were actually the stereotypical jocks and yeah. they were like you know writing nasty things about girls on there and right. stuff or like cheerleaders and they had a, a big thing where they just had to had everyone delete it, you yeah. know, like the honor system thing, delete yeah. it off your phone, yeah. you know, if you're yakking, we'll see, because it says at Prairie Ridge High School, right. so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm on Twitter, I, I like being on there, uh, I don't get the harassment, I don't think I enter the, um, the maybe the right things or the right places to yeah. attract that, or not the kind of person that gets it um, harassed on, on Twitter. Uh, but uh, one thing that's had avoided me from putting um, classes out into Reddit has been the uh, kind of 
den of the trolls, not quite 4chan, but uh, Reddit kind of bring brings people who... Uh, yeah, and I think uh, Twitter is, like, the least, like, harmful. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... Most people, like, on Twitter, they follow things that make them laugh. Right. yeah. Like, they don't actually go on Twitter to, like, interact with other people. Yeah. So, and, like, they, like, share or retweet mm. something. So, it's not even... I mean, if you're going to post something nasty, I feel like it's going to be on Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah. I think Twitter is, like, the best out of all of them, almost. Right, pretty, the most benign. Yeah. Um, and anything else that's maybe been confusing about about the topics that you said, there's mostly been, like, negative things. That, so there's these highlight curated reels of, of kind of our best moments um, while we're sitting there eating breakfast, scrolling through um, these um, moments and how that makes us feel little bit about um, positive like people being able to have these kind of like digital networks that you know like my family's up in Minnesota uh, and Wisconsin so I can connect to them easily on that but any kind of confusing things you've come across um, well I I feel like I'm a little apart from like my generation just because I don't like really like technology um, like I, it took me a while to have a Facebook and like the only reason why I have it now is basically classes that have their pages and soccer that's mm-hmm. it if I didn't have that I wouldn't have a Facebook account and that like stinks because I'd I'd want to not have it but like I can't because a lot of people say like if you want to like not have a phone or accounts or anything like you can do that but it's hard because everyone around you is in it and you kind of need it just to go about your day yeah so it's just like confusing like all the research <laughs> that we've done is just like I don't know, like, I want to find another way, Mm -hmm. like, that we can eventually all get to that just separates us from, like, technology, but I don't think that's impossible. Yeah, Yeah. so I guess the confusing thing would be that, you know, they tell you, like, to just drop it all or to, like, get a break from it, but you, Mm -hmm. like, society literally has its claws in you where you cannot do that because you wouldn't, you, you know... You wouldn't be able to function literally like we wouldn't get soccer updates on where we're yeah. practicing the next day mm-hmm. or, you know, the coach sending out an email or stuff like that. So it's you literally cannot get away from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, always try to, I don't know if I was raised this way or what, but I like react against the man. And so like when everyone tells me to do something like I like miss, immediately bristle at it. Uh, and so, yeah, Facebook, like one habit, if uh, I didn't like need it to like, just have this kind of photos that were, you know, have been over 10 years and, uh, people who I don't have any other way to access or contact them mm-hmm. uh, and so like being forced into having to use that cell phones like I, I wouldn't have a cell phone in order to like call people or text people uh, if I didn't need one uh, yeah. for that uh, because I just don't like the um, expectation uh, that uh, okay. because you have one you're accessible 24-7 or uh, you know if you don't respond within two seconds that uh, right. what's going on yeah I'm um, a good example of the cell phone thing, Coach Rother mm-hmm. had a, you know, like an NV2 flip phone uh-huh. until mm-hmm. just the beginning of last year. He got yeah. an iPhone and he got like iPhone 5, you know, okay, like sure. the oldest yeah. one. And he said it was just because he needed, you know, to be able to get those emails mm-hmm. right on the spot like that, even from his kids' schools and stuff yeah. like that. And I think he mostly got it because he started that um, that kids' league. So, oh, okay, yeah. so then he could get emails from parents if they weren't going to make practices or things like that. But mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a great example of like trying to stay away from the whole technology thing as long as you possibly could. Yeah, and it, yeah, like I said, it's just impossible. Uh, and you brought up something; it crossed my mind, and now I forget. Let me uh, go forward from there. How about do you think that there's any like new direction that we're going to go with social media and uh, our interactions for stress or, or other things? I think it's gonna. I think personal interaction is just gonna fade eventually. It's uh, it's really sad, but. Uh, I read articles about how we're developing empty friendships and relationships. So it's like you can be friends with your best friend from childhood, Mm -hmm. but now you likely don't talk to them or you follow them or whatever. And um, you just know what they're doing sometimes. But most of the time it's just like you just know they're alive, basically. Yeah, Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, reading all these articles, people are realizing the, uh, the problem that social media has so I mean there's hopes that that if they can recognize that that maybe someone comes up with something where social media is still present Mm -hmm. but we still somehow create this 
new technology maybe mm-hmm. use the negative for a positive so we can still interact one to one like we are right now yeah so um yeah i mean use technology for good not bad and try mm-hmm. to create something that that stops the horrible things that social media does and yeah. and pushes forward the positives that it creates mm-hmm. yeah because as much as i like social media and, and technology and uh, incorporated in class and everything at the same time there's something special about uh, one-on-one face-to-face interactions right. and so yeah. uh, in educa- higher education there's the thought that oh well we could just you know like have these MOOCs multi um, massive online open courses where people just sign up and you do it from your basement or whatever from your house yeah. uh, and I th- there's just something missing about the kind of human interaction one-to-one and why a lot of workplaces even though it's possible to telecommute or, or do different things, they still ask you to come into a four wall, inside four walls and meet with other people. Right, yeah, like I took a summer class uh, this past summer, and it was online. So I was at home. The professor mm-hmm. was at her house sending out our homework mm-hmm. assignments and stuff like that. Um, and it was it was still hard because you had, like, the written out explanation of what, what you're supposed to do, but, mm-hmm. like, and you had these questions, but maybe you didn't know how to like write them down right. and email them. And you're like, it'd be so much easier if I could turn my computer around and ask her yeah, right. the mm-hmm. question. So, yeah, it's it's a good thing because that's you know, um, you know, less time mm-hmm. and it creates more opportunities to take different classes while you're on campus. But it's also harder and yeah. maybe less productive. Right. So. Yeah, and some, I, what I thought of what I was thinking about when you said that uh, Coach Rother got a phone. Uh, so the basketball team, I found out, has their phones taken away from them on all um, away game like trips, oh, wow. the bus trips. Does that happen for the women's soccer team? <laughs> no. no. once in a blue moon. Like really? Last, se- last season, they'd like, if we had a bus ride of like three or more hours, oh, wow. they'd like have let us have it for like an hour uh-huh. and then they'll just randomly just start taking them yeah like give up your phones but it's like if if they turn around and everyone's head is down like yeah. this okay you know if you're sitting there and you're listening to music and everyone's like right, passed yeah. out then they're uh-huh. like well, whatever they're but like, if like yeah. there's a group of people in the back that are talking and stuff and uh-huh. the rest of the bus is just like this then they're like all right come on yeah and recently it's just been movies like okay. there's a lot of people that just tune into the movies yeah and that's mm-hmm. how they keep us like off our phones too yeah okay yeah, I just was surprised. I never had heard about that before. Uh, and then the other the other thing that made me think of is that the other J-Term is currently uh, finishing up their uh, retreat, and the, their professor took away their cell phones. Uh, how do you think that would have uh, affected people in our class? Um, I don't think we really... Everyone I mean, unless we were sport. like... Yeah, unless we were like sitting there waiting to do yeah, something, right. we yeah. would like scroll through Twitter or yeah. something. But I don't think any of us really... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we like went somewhere and just sat on our phone, yeah, hot and hid from you or anything. Yeah, so like, yeah, so that yeah, that was good. Our class, it's our class was special, I think, for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't think it. I mean, you could have took our phones away. I don't think yeah. it really would have affected us much. Yeah, I was so a I mean, game, like, yeah, mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, like that one night we just played yes, guards the yeah. whole thing, and we were perfectly fine with that. Yeah. So. Well, great. So, uh, kind of shifting gears, uh, is there anything you'd like to promote coming up? Clubs, sports. Women's soccer fall 2017. Um, <laughs> come out. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, come out. You got a little skills. Just show up, and we'll take a look at you. Make sure you're in shape, though, because you got to run that beep test. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Uh, 18 or 20 yards? Uh, 18. Well. No, 20, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, 20. Just beyond the box. In season, In season, we do 18 because oh, okay. we're you know, games and stuff. But, yeah, the preseason, we, just, we didn't do it last year, though, because it rained. And, and then just, Poochie was just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not making this up. we got to start practicing. How about uh, things that you've come across that other people should know about? Uh, yeah, thank you.